and there are four of me. Hey everyone, it's Paul Bertarelli reporting for Aviation Consumer, coming to you in Genuine Quad Division. Well, not really, I just made that up. What you're looking at is the output of four point of view or action cams, and as you may know, this market has recently heated up. Both Garmin and GoPro have introduced new models, and that adds to already a half a dozen of them out there. And aviation is a target market for these cameras, so in this video we're going to take kind of a 10,000-foot uh, view, well, more like an 800-foot view, I am in a cub after all, of these cameras. And it used to be that if you wanted a point-of-view camera, you bought a GoPro and you were happy, but the choices are a lot more complicated than that. So to get started, back to you in the studio, Paul. Well, we all know that Facebook and YouTube are virtually bottomless pits of video demand, and that probably explains why there are so many of these POV cameras on the market. And we don't have all of them, and that doesn't even include cell phone cameras. So which one to pick? It really depends on what you want to do. For most aviation work, for getting shots inside the cockpit or attaching the camera to the outside of the airplane, three of these cameras are perfectly suitable. One is a little less so, and I'll get to that in a minute. First, let's look at the general specs, starting with price. Both the GoPro Hero 5 and Garmin Verb Ultra, that's the newest version, sell for $399 for the basic camera. The Verb XE, which is the older model, sells for $399, but there's also an aviation bundle, and that sells for $499. The new Verb Ultra will also have an aviation bundle for the same price. The 360 Fly is available in two versions, one called HD and one called 4K, Prices on those are $299 and $499, respectively. So that gets us to 4K. Do you really need it? In a word, no. Well, maybe. If you've got a 4K television or a 4K monitor and you can see the footage that these cameras produce in all their high-resolution glory, well, then go for it. Otherwise, the 4K files are going to be a lot larger than the 1080p files, Video editors tend to have trouble with them, and the computer just generally chokes on them. So for my purposes, I'm, I give 4K a pass. The Hero 5 and Verb Ultra both offer 4K, and the Ultra also has what you might call half 4K at 2.7K. These are nice to have if you have access to 4K displays, but 1080p, which all the cameras have, will likely be more than adequate for most of us and the SD cards will hold plenty of footage so that the files will just be a lot easier to handle. Now on to operability. Anyone with past experience with GoPro cameras will tell you two things. The camera menus can be frustrating if not entirely obtuse, and everyone has a collection of inadvertent selfies because the shutter button got bumped or the mode button got accidentally switched from video to still. Not exactly technology's brightest moment. Well, I guess we should give thanks to the gods of consumer electronics because GoPro has straightened this out on the Hero 5. This top button will record a video whether the camera is on or not, and holding it down will snap a photo. It's pretty handy. The menu system is much simplified and streamlined, and better yet, you can walk through it with a touchscreen control that actually works. You can pretty easily switch through camera modes, resolutions, and frame rates without a lot of screwing around and missteps. There's also a smartphone app to run this camera, and in my experience, it works a lot better than the previous version did. With the app running on an iPhone, you can see some of the command options, and there's also a streaming viewer that really works well in real time. Mechanically, the GoPro 5 is a bit of a mixed bag. They've done away with the seal case the previous models had in favor of this rack-type case. The camera itself is waterproof down to 10 meters. That sounds good, but for that to work, this side door has to be in place. Well, no problem there, but you'll have to remove it if you want to charge the camera in its case. For aviation use, this is probably okay, but it's not the most elegant design. Also, the Hero 5 uses a USB-C cable. Now, that's an emerging standard, but it's not a common cable, so you're going to have to carry around a special cable for charging the GoPro Hero 5. So in the Verb Ultra 30, Garmin is taking a serious run at GoPro, and the cameras are really very similar. The previous Verbs, like the Elite and the XE, are waterproof without a case. For the Ultra, Garmin followed the GoPro example and made a smaller camera, but with a waterproof case. 
Like the Hero 5, it has touchscreen driven menu control and accepts commands easily without a lot of false starts. The feature I most like about the verb is this. Rather than a button for the record command, the verb uses a toggle and you can turn this on even when the camera itself isn't powered up so you can grab a quick recording. That means there is no chance of an uncommanded start as was common with the older GoPros. If you've ever used one, you know what I mean. And from the technology run amok department, both of these cameras, the Ultra 30 and the GoPro Hero 5, have voice control. And the way that works on the Ultra 30 is like this. Okay, Garmin, start recording. And the recording starts. Now on the GoPro Hero 5, if you want to mark the footage, you just say, that's sick, and it marks the footage for you. The Garmin is a little more buttoned down. So if you say, remember that, it will put a marker on the footage. The only thing is, all of your recordings or all your clips are going to end like this. Okay, Garmin, stop recording. It's got to allow for that. And by the way, you can get some wicked cool footage if you attach the camera to the prop like this. No, don't do that. And that gets us to the 360 fly. You know, if the Borg had a point of view camera, this is what it would look like, only maybe cubicle. In a nod to minimalism, the fly has only one button, which serves as both the power control and the record button. Everything else is done through the app. The fly is what's called a 360 degree camera, and I can show that better than I can explain it. It's not entirely 360 degrees because you see the entire horizon, but only 240 degrees vertically. It sounds like it produces some strange images. It does, as you can see from this footage. But if you need super wide shots for whatever you're creating, the fly will do that with a single camera while none of the others will. It's technically 4K, but because of the aspect of the imagery, the pixel aspect ratio is not true 4K. As you can see from the app, the fly has selectable resolutions, and this one, called POV, yields a 16 by 9 image, similar to that shot by the other cameras. But the other cameras just do a little bit better job in that format. The fly is really a specialty camera for creative shots. It's probably not the best choice if you're only going to have one POV camera. Now, before I close up the hangar doors, one more camera mention. This is the Verb XE, which is the predecessor to the Ultra. At $399, it's a really credible camera, terrific imagery, but it doesn't have 4K and it doesn't have a viewer screen. So if I compare this to the Ultra 30, I think I'm going to go with the Ultra 30 at the same price. You can find a full review of all of these cameras in the November 2016 issue of Aviation Consumer. And don't forget to look elsewhere on the channel where you can find a deep dive on both the Ultra 30 and GoPro's new Hero 5. I'm Paul Bertarelli reporting. Thanks for watching. I'm going to try to land with four cameras plastered to the windshield. Whose idea was this?